Hey guys and welcome to the ARC and uh, today we have a very, very exciting uh, guest to the podcast, uh, the one and only Asad Ahmed and uh, I have to add that it wasn't easy getting him but a very busy man, he has to take an appointment with his wife. But yeah, I mean uh, we're meeting after a very long time. It's been a while, it's been a while but we've been in touch. We've been in touch and, and uh, it's... I'm very happy with uh, this initiative that you've taken. Thanks, uh, man. I appreciate it. Which is which is great for artists, and you're highlighting a lot of people who deserve to be highlighted as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and that was the idea, basically. The idea was to highlight people who have not been highlighted enough, and uh, for people who are getting into the business, or want to be musicians, or want to know about what. The music world is all about the ups and downs, so you know stuff like that. Absolutely, it's great. It's so yeah, I mean, uh, we've also been. Uh, I think the last time we hung out was Coke Studio season four. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how long it's been. Yeah. So, at that time, Asad's daughter was also very young, and my daughter was also very young. Yeah. 
आप लोगों में किसी के पास अगर डी वी प्लेयर है तो प्लीज इफ आई कैन बॉर्डर इट टू जस्ट ट्रांसफॉर द फाइल्स बट या आई मीन इट्स बिन अ वाइल्ड असद एंड वेल आई बिन फॉलोइंग द स्टफ दैट यू बिन डूइंग फॉर द पास फ्यू ईयर्स एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम फ्रॉम कारवान फॉलोइंग यू टू थैंक्स थैंक्स सो एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम कारवान टू टू योर सोलो एल्बम व्हिच आई थिंक यू जस्ट यू जस्ट रिकॉर्डेड द द सेकंड द सेकंड इंस्ट्रूमेंटल एल्बम राइट आई हैव आई एम एक्चुअली ऑन द फोर्थ वन नाउ You got to be kidding me. Yeah. So the first one came out uh, in 2017 uh-huh. uh, through EMI. All right. And um, I waited a, a while to see if it was viable at all. Uh, and it is. So I did the next one when the lockdown happened. Uh, Best time in uh, March 2020. And that came out in the summer last year. And then I did another one for the winter. which is the track that you guys have seen or are about to yeah. see no they have seen it oh they've seen it ah. <laughs> i always put the track first okay so that's the track that you guys have clickbait. seen clickbait ah clickbait <laughs> uh there'll be a link up here yeah exactly <laughs> exactly uh and now i'm on the fourth one yeah so uh it's been it's been great i love doing instrumental music as you know and uh you know a lot of my heroes growing up jeff beck and yeah. all of these guys they You know, I that's what I wanted to do, and the band thing I do as well on the side. Uh-huh. Um, You're also touring with Ali Zafar, right? Yes, I I work with Ali Zafar. I work with other people as well. Uh-huh. Um, but this is this is a passion project. Yeah, that's that's always the best. Yeah, because you get to do whatever you want, and uh, and I also also uh, so yeah, uh, this question has been in my mind uh, from the time I decided that you know I, because a lot of people did ask for you. They're like, please get Asad. Uh, on the show <laughs> it's not a show it's <laughs> it's just a channel and uh, you know it's uh, i'm getting my friends i'm getting my colleagues i'm getting uh, you know people who deserve to be known out there you know so that kind of stuff so this question has always been in my mind that you've been producing for a very long time uh we'll start from uh, the time of barbarians this right. was what uh, early mid 90s that was uh, 1989 actually wow yeah The, the days of eight track glory. tape and uh, days of glory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, man. I mean, I I remember I remember going into the studio. We were completely green. I was only 18 years old at that time. And uh, to have a mixing board in front of you, and then to have an eight track studio yeah, machine. Exactly. Uh, wow. At, you know, you, you whose studio was this? This was EMI. Uh, this was EMI when EMI was at site, uh, and it was. Uh, this was around the time when I think the the Vital Signs album was also being recorded. Correct, right? correct, correct. This is exactly that time, and that was the only studio here that that yeah, had yeah. good equipment and a big, big right. sort of uh, room where you could, you know, mic up the drums and and do all of that. So we recorded live in 1989. It was terrible, but. Wow. <laughs> because we were because we were 18 yeah. year old kids exactly. we didn't know what we were doing yeah. but that experience uh was was wonderful and uh, and is that what got you into sort of uh, taking that lead because i i know that whether it was barbarians whether it was caravan and now your solo i know your solo stuff is is pretty much everything you yeah everything yeah. is you yeah pretty uh, with caravan also um, i can watch for a fact that the stuff the the sounds the the whole concept of the way the drum should be played i had really liked that first album you guys did with uh, with najam uh, it was brilliant yeah. and i think we also uh, shared stage at uh, nusrat's uh, last performance uh, for Correct. the channel week concert right? Correct. 1997. 1997 summer of 1997 yeah, wow <laughs> and then you were also with avaz yeah Yeah, for and like for three, four years, and, and then, so were you. And then, <laughs> then we played exactly, and and that's I think that's where we sort of started hanging out. Yeah, yeah. From, so from the Avaz. Uh, so time. It, it was Avaz, and then from Avaz we went and we did the Vital Signs uh, oh, UK wow, tour. I remember uh, that. Uh, what a great, uh, what which, a great concert, huh? Oh yeah. You've all heard a lot of good music. 
And now get ready. Great. That's show. also floating somewhere on on the internet. That is on. Yeah. If you people want to find it, just type Vital Signs, Birmingham, 1997. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was at the. NEC. I looked anorexic there. <laughs> <laughs> you were very young, so was I. Yeah, I know, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, Rohail in that picture, and I still have some some actually hard copies of that uh, of of that trip uh, pictures. That trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll share it. I'll share it with you. So yeah, we, so I was coming to uh, to my question is that, uh, and this is a question I think a lot of people are very sort of even confused about, yeah. or are not sure what what it actually means mm -hmm. so i think you would be the best person what does it mean to be a producer that's subjective and that's a it's something that uh, some people get right and some people don't for me personally the definition of producer would be an individual who takes in a band or an artist under his or her wing arranges composes picks out the right sound and the right timber for yeah. said track or uh, instrument and puts it all together someone who sees the bigger picture as opposed to a singular picture which is just the guitar or just the drums or the you have to look at it as a whole. So you're looking at creativity and you're looking at the technicalities both. Correct. Correct. And and that's that's my take also as as a producer. So uh, I uh, always shy away from taking that credit yeah. because I don't I don't think I I deserve that <laughs> that title. But I know that you've done a lot of that with Caravan. Yeah. I, again, I will not take away anything from uh, Samir Ahmed, Alan Smith. Najam Shiraz and Tanseer Rath. They, they contributed uh, as much as they could mm -hmm. and their contributions were great. And yeah, of phenomenal. course. I mean, so, so, see, there's one thing to, to be a producer and then it's another thing for every individual to add their personality or their character into sure. the track. But sure. uh, like I remember when we were doing the, the Coke Studios sessions, yeah. uh, Rohail would be sort of, uh, you know, sort of putting the whole thing together. Yeah. You know, yeah. like he'd be sitting there with his headphones. He'd be sitting there listening to all of us uh, play, yeah. and would be like, "Tk, mujhe ye samaj mein aara hai, ye samaj mein nahi aara hai. So how about we add this, or how do we do this? Yeah. We do this. So, so basically, yeah. like you said, it's it's, it's one person it's seeing the bigger picture. The bigger picture. So it's one person being the SSL bus compressor. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> For all you techies out there. <laughs> so tell me something. Uh, how did you get into this? I, I mean, I know you were a full-blown rock star playing guitar. Yeah. Your power chords, yeah. the whole kiss thing, the whole rush thing happening. Yeah. yeah. And you, you were like a musician, musician out there. Like, uh, okay, we a rock and roll song. Don't do that. You got and all that stuff. And you had yeah. this showmanship on stage, and yeah. you had this this personality on stage, which is like people would be like, wow. You know that kind of stuff. So, how did you get? Was it the first uh, sort of experience in the studio with Barbarians that got you excited into doing your own stuff, or were you forcibly pushed into it? Uh, as in producing? Yeah. I very early on I realized that um, if you're going to if you're going to do something, do it properly and do it right. perfectly yeah. to your ability. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes you run into problems when other members of a team uh, are not up to the mark. Okay. So what you do is you pick up the slack. You don't ever... Yeah, someone has to take the lead basically. You don't ever belittle them, yeah. but you push them to their limit where they can go. Yeah. And then the rest is up to you as a team leader. Yeah. Uh, are you going to clean up that track yeah. if the drummer is slightly uh, off. Yeah. Are you going to shift his track a little bit just yeah. so that he's on exactly. time? Uh, the guitars. Did you hit a bum note? Yeah. Are you going to punch that out? Yeah. You know things like that. Is the singer in tune? No. Okay. Attention we're tune to him. detail, basically. Yeah. Attention to detail. 
is is the most important thing when it comes to producing music. Uh, you know, the end end user, the customer yeah. or the fan who listens yeah. to our music, doesn't understand the amount of hours that go in. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of back and forth to to yeah. to do this stuff, and and it's it's gratifying because at the end of the day, if what you've done sucks, you take all the the blame for it, yeah. and if it's amazing, you get all the credit for it. I wouldn't want it any other way because. Why should somebody else take the blame or the credit? Agreed. That that's such a great attitude to have, basically. That's that's. Yeah. True. <laughs> you wouldn't have it any other way. No, that's right. No. So yeah. So coming to uh, to an, uh, to another discussion. Uh, who instilled this whole thing of getting into music or getting into this whole thing? Uh, I know your brother Ahmad. Ahmad. Ahmad uh, was uh, was also into into music, he's, and he's also an architect, right? He's an architect. And yeah. is Asim also into? Uh, Asim yeah. was also into music. He he was more of a he was more into his, his sort body of building body stuff. building and yeah. health uh, kick. <laughs> yeah. um, so you're you're the youngest of. I'm the youngest of three, of three uh, brothers, yeah. and uh, you know honestly, I think the the reason I got into music was because of my mom. uh my parents uh, had an amazing record collection uh, this is back in the days when there was vinyl folks yeah um and in that collection was santana we are from uh, the dinosaur age yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> we are from the dinosaur age yeah in that collection was santana yeah. the rolling stones the beatles elvis uh even some blue stuff like muddy waters uh and stuff like that so i i was constantly listening to that music in the house growing up because they would be yeah. spinning that and then of course the disco age happened so all of that yeah. music was also being played in the house yeah. uh, a lot of casey and the sunshine band uh earth wind and fire yeah uh, that kind of stuff parliament that funk was, that's a great pop music from from yeah. that time yeah for that that time was was amazing and then um, then then one day uh, my brother had uh, he he was more into rock music imad yeah. and imad uh, brought home a whole bunch of stuff from van halen the first van wow. halen album yeah. uh case alive acdc highway to hell a whole bunch of stuff and that's where that's where i said this is what i want to do and my mom uh, actually bought my first guitar for me uh, i had no money as yeah, as you know we exactly. at that age you have no money <laughs> yeah and uh, i begged and pleaded begged and pleaded and the first guitar that she got me and i and you will remember this one was a red bc rich bitch <laughs> <laughs> it was for 5000 rupees only yeah. can you're you imagine me. those things are bloody 150000 rupees now i wish i had kept yeah. it <laughs> wow so why guitar honestly i wanted to be a bass player you, you, very, you actually the, your your drumming skills are not bad also i like drumming too yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah i i wanted to be a bass player because uh the the very first instrument that i played was actually a bass when we were in, we were living in you dubai i was playing bass with junoon i was playing bass with junoon and i was playing bass with amir zaki wow way back this is before i met him i yes. i met amir in 89 90 basically yeah yeah yeah, yeah. good old days yeah. <laughs> we used to live in kd i remember and just a fond memories of you know it's it's unfortunate that you know uh, every few years that i uh, go around town in karachi it's fewer and fewer places that i can recognize is because all those places that you grew up in those old houses they're gone. Uh, that are all gone they're gone you know it's unfortunate but anyways that's that's our little <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate things but so uh, so it was your mom and mom. what about your dad was your dad very supportive of the stuff or dad. was he like dad was okay as long as i got good grades uh-huh. uh the minute my grades start uh, started slipping uh-huh. he was like uh, it's either this or that okay and he uh, chose music i i chose music and and he was unhappy about it initially uh-huh. uh until the first paycheck came in and I, and i think that's fair because parents only want to know that their child is going to be secure going to be secure yeah. and 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 once that first paycheck came in he was okay That is true. Actually, it's the same case with me. My mother was like, uh, 
you you better get your grades out or <laughs> or to chaprasi ban ho gaya us tarah se ban ho gaya but uh, so so the thing is that uh, i remember the first time i met you was this guy was asleep in his room <laughs> and i went with keith oh yeah with keith vanancius to his house by the way for all of you people <laughs> out there keith is the original singer in the barbarians barbarians yeah so yeah so Trivia. keith took me to his house and this i'm talking about uh, early 90s maybe yeah, yeah. and I, this he he was a complete complete star lambe bal aur uh, mess all over the room and he has all his posters and everything put all his guitars rigged up there and i was like wow i want to be like this man <laughs> <laughs> that is the first time I met Asad. Actually, this was uh, maybe early '90s, early yeah, late '80s, early '90s, maybe around around the time I met Amir also. And then uh, I remember watching his uh, his videos with with Avaz. Oh yeah. And then I, even at that time, I was like, dude, Avaz is here, and then Asad is here, literally. Like Asad's playing was this whole da 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 and stuff, and then Avaz was here, this whole pop stuff that was happening. But nonetheless, I, I remember Jadoo ka Charag, man. That was such a great solo. Yeah. 